Hey guys, Jim here. Time to do a video on this bad boy. I've had a lot of people begging me to get up off my ass and get this video done because I've had this knife for a few months now and I just haven't had the time to make the video. I haven't had time to make a lot of videos and, and again, I apologize for that. I did crank out uh, two more a couple days ago. Hopefully you guys have caught up with those and uh, I'm going to try to get some more done as quickly as I can. But this is one that a lot of you see on my Instagram a lot. It's one of my favorite knives. I carry it a lot and it's one of the pieces that while I get offers on it almost every time I post about it, it's one that I, I really don't ever see myself letting go. And we all say that, you know, we all say this is a keeper. I'm never going to let this go. And, you know, at some point we're chasing a grail or somebody makes an offer that's too good to refuse. So it, it's almost impossible to say that these days, but this is one that I find holds a really special place in my collection just based on what it is. <clears throat> For those that don't know, this is a Kirby Lambert Snap. And basically what a Snap is, more or less, it's a flipper variation of the Orion. And as you've heard me say in my previous two Lambert videos on my Orion MGT and on my Blitz, there's a wonderful degree of consistency with Kirby. His products are just as close to perfect as you can ever expect. And this certainly is another great example of that. I've never picked up a Lambert that didn't have an amazing smooth action. I never picked up a Lambert that you could see any detectable flaws. I never picked up a Lambert where there wasn't a wonderfully smooth transition between the materials that he's chosen. And <clears throat> To me, that's a big deal. It's great to come across a really great knife maker and a great knife, but when you start looking at many examples of their work and you start to see some inconsistencies, you know, I think that's really what separates the really great makers from the good makers. And I really consider Kirby to be one of the great makers, and I think he's going to have a name that's going to uh, live far past his own lifetime because of the quality of the work and the care that he puts into each and every knife. Now, this is my most expensive Lambert to date. Uh, obviously, it's much more exotic than the ones that I've had before. Uh, again, it is another MGT, so it has the multi-grind Tanto blade. And this time, it's the symmetric. Most of the time, I don't want to say most of the time, but generally when you see an MGT, your presentation side will have the multi-grind Tanto, and the other side will be a much more simplified grind, the asymmetric. And I love that. And that's what I had on my Orion. Loved it, loved it, loved it. But I also like having the symmetrical grind as well. I think it's pretty much even for me. I like it both ways. Don't read too much into that statement. <clears throat> so this is the most expensive variation that I've owned because of the material. So we've got marble carbon fiber, zirconium, blue titanium liners, blue titanium hardware, a Nichols XHP Core Sand My Blade, and then the Zirconium for the pocket clip as well. So definitely a lot more exotic than the pieces I've had in the past. And it, you know, it's, you're going to pay for that shit. Kirby's prices also went up a little bit in 2014. Not a huge jump, but a significant amount where you go, wow, that's a little bit of a difference there. <clears throat> And you'll have to excuse me if I have to clear my throat every now and then. I'm coming off a, a couple of really, really bad colds back to back. And it's just the way it is. The great thing about this knife, there's a little bit of a story behind it. I'll try to make it as quick as I possibly can. Um, when this knife was offered new, I missed it by minutes. And the collector that got it is someone that I knew on Instagram. And when he posted about it, I said, if you ever get bored of that knife, I want it no matter what. It is one of the most beautiful knives I've ever seen. And I love that all dark theme that Kirby went with here. And uh, he says, yeah, yeah, no problem. And the problem was when he came around and decided to sell it, I think he was chasing a grail at the time. When he offered it to me, it was during the holiday season last year, 2014. And I had just dumped about 10 grand that month in knives. That's when I got my GTC Airborne. That's when I got my Robert Carter F-16 and, and a few other things. So it was just, it was too much for me to bear that month. I'm not made of money. And uh, I said, well, you know, regretfully, I've got a pass. You know, because this was, uh, he wanted around 22 or 2300 for it. And I said, no, nah. I said, <clears throat> there's just no way that I can do that reasonably right now. So he ended up selling it to a really, really good friend of mine, Abe. You guys have heard me talk about him often, and 
If you watch my Instagram enough, you know that we always hung out. We both lived in Miami. Now that I've moved away, you won't see those pictures anymore. But uh, so Abe ended up buying it. And Abe has these big gorilla-like paws. And a three and a half inch snap was too small for him. And I was counting on that. I was banking on that. When it, the day he told me he bought it, I'm like, ah, there's my chance. It's going to be way too small for him. And I'll be able to buy it from him. And lo and behold, two or three months later, uh, he made me the offer. And it was really awesome because he gave me a bro deal. Uh, he and I have bought and sold a lot of knives between each other. I always try to give him the best deal I can. He knows what I pay for my knives, so he knows he's getting a good deal. And he sold it to me for 1900 Now, yeah, that's still a shitload of money for a folding pocket knife. But considering what it is and considering what it, it, it is really worth, it was a no-brainer deal. <clears throat> so the day I got it, I was overjoyed. And it still to this day gives me the same kind of joy when I pick it up, throw it in my pocket. Let me give you some close-ups here. We'll start with the knife closed. We'll get a good look at the zirconium. Beautiful, rich, polished zirconium. You can even see my camera and me if I wave. Hello! Nice polished job on there. And there we have the Steve Kelly pivot. And one of the things I love that Kirby's been doing is multiple color anodizing in his pivots. So you've got the gold and you have the blue. Then of course the blue titanium screws. An original marbled carbon fiber, not the newer stuff. This is some of the old stock that uh, isn't around anymore that you can't get anymore. And marble carbon fiber is my favorite because number one, I love the random swirl patterns, but number two, I love the iridescence. The light just shimmers off certain areas of the weave <clears throat> and it looks absolutely breathtaking at least to me it's my personal opinion you may not like marble carbon fiber it's like I don't like shredded carbon fiber there's something about it I do not like but it has a similar shimmering effect that people find attractive so you'll notice the frame is all done in blued titanium he's done a great uh, matte bead blasted finish and then done the uh, Kind of a medium blue through it all. It doesn't really jump out at you. It takes you a second to realize that it's actually anodized. Then he's done a floating backspacer in zirconium with these bronze standoffs. I don't know if they're bronze or brass. I'm going to assume they're bronze. They have a little bit more of a bronze look than a brass look. Coming around to the back side, there's that zirconium sculpted pocket clip. More marbled carbon fiber and the zirconium once again. And then you get to this insanely beautiful blade. The presentation side looks great. It is a beautiful, beautiful pattern. But my favorite is the, is the uh, lock side. I love the aggressive look of this. <clears throat> and I love the negative space that you see in here as well, that you don't really have much on this side. Now with the San Mai, Kirby was really one of the first guys to perfect the etch on San Mai. It's a little bit different, and Kirby did share with me his secret because I'm having another... Uh, I actually had another San Mai blade built for me by Robert Carter. I'm having another one built right now, actually, as a matter of fact, this week by uh, Dustin Turpin. And... You'll notice some guys that start working with the XHP Core San Mai, then when they go to etch it, they just get different shades of gray. Whereas Kirby gets down to nearly a perfect black with these bright highlights. So when Rob first did my F16 and he showed me the progress, I'm like, yeah, you're kind of getting that gray effect. Let me, let me ask Kirby if he wouldn't mind, because you, know, you never know if somebody's going to want to share their secrets or not, and see if he'll share what he does. Kirby was wonderfully generous with the information. I told him why I wanted it and who it was for. And he's like, absolutely, I'm happy to share that. I know it's a little bit tricky. And it's just basically one extra little step. And I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. And that took, and I looked at the, the comparison pictures when Rob did the initial etch and then did the, uh, the third etch, basically, because he did two and they didn't come out great. And the third was like Kirby instructed. And it was almost a night and day difference. And obviously, you guys have seen my F16. It's a very, very dark, 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 uh, rich black uh, blade. Kirby's a genius. He really is. 
He has a way of taking something, even in a more simple form, and making it so incredible and unique and special. And that's how I feel about this knife. And that's why I honestly don't think it's ever going to leave my collection. It's a great size, about a three and a half inch blade. It's one of my favorite sizes. It's compact. It's easy to carry. Now, even though it's a little bit heavier being in zirconium, it is a pretty easy knife to carry. And with Kirby, you always get a nice thick handle. So you've got a nice purchase on the knife. Fits really well in my hand. I wear a size large glove. All the way around, <clears throat> it's one of the knives that I feel really, really proud to own. And when I'm going to meet a fellow knife dude for the first time, this is one of the knives that I reach for to put in my pocket um, because it's something that you don't get a chance to see every day. And there are still a lot of makers that don't even work with zirconium yet. There are a lot of makers that have never worked with the true marbled carbon fiber. So to see these things uh, for someone that's never had that exposure, this is a really kick-ass knife. And it's every bit as impressive in person as it is in pictures or as it will be here in the video. It's one of those that, uh, <clears throat> like I said, every time I reach for it, every time I carry it, I'm really, really happy that I own it. I feel very, uh, very honored to have the chance to own this. So, Abe, thank you for making that little dream of mine come true. And let's take a look here at the, uh, the lockup. There we see the blue titanium meeting up to the San Mai. Perfectly centered, as you would expect. And he uses quite a bit of the, uh, the frame here for the blade, so he really fills it up nicely, but there's no chance for your finger to snag the tip of the blade at all. And the only downside to having a zirconium knife is that they are fingerprint magnets, but it's really going to be anything that's polished. If that were polished titanium, satin titanium, or a very high satin titanium, it's going to do the same thing. Um, I like it. It's a little bit, tiny little bit more scratch resistant than titanium. I love the darker look of it. So zirconium is something I've really gotten heavily into in the past year or two. It's a great material. It's hard to work with. It's, you know, it's very dangerous. If you've talked to or seen any of the videos that knife makers have made about working with zirconium, the shit is highly flammable. And, you know, they could be sitting there grinding whatever material they're grinding and it's not usually a huge fire hazard. You get the zirconium, you get all the shavings on the shop floor or in the shop uh, bin or, or, or pail or whatever. And another shaving that's still hot because it remains hot for a long time makes its way to that pile. It can set the whole thing ablaze. So there are makers that just will not work with it. They just figure it's, it's too dangerous. I'm not going to, why risk it? Why risk burning my shop down to make one friggin' knife? Yeah, it looks cool, but it's not really worth the risk. But there are more and more makers now that are exploring it, and for me, I think it's absolutely worth the risk. I mean, look how sexy that looks. This knife would still look amazing if that were titanium in the bolsters and titanium on the clip. No doubt about it. But to get this nice, rich, dark black look, and to be a little bit more scratch resistant than titanium, to me, makes it worth it. And I think for the theme of this knife, it really, really, really worked out well. So there it is. Kind of a quick look. I'm, most of my videos are, you know, 18 to 20 to 22 minutes or so. I'm going to try to shorten the length of my videos going forward just because I don't have a lot of time to dedicate to this anymore. Um, now that I've changed careers and now that I work all the friggin' time, you know, I used to work 13 hours a week. And that gave me a lot of free time. Now I'm working like 50, 60 hours a week. So my time is a little bit more limited. So I'll try to keep these a little bit shorter and do my best to keep up with them. So there you have it, guys. This is my Snap MGT by Kirby Lambert. One of the, uh, I still think, one of the most talented knife makers in the game today. I think he's going to have a very, very, very long career. And he's going to be one of those names that lives on forever and with that, that pedigree of perfection that he's got going. And you know what? He's a real gentleman. He's a real nice guy. He's a very quiet guy. Uh, super, super nice. And I actually feel kind of guilty because... Um, I've been waiting on his books for a couple of years, and I finally came up on his books. You guessed it, 
at the same time that this was originally offered to me last year during the holidays. And I went, oh shit, Kirby, dude, I didn't expect to come up. Um, I'm a little bit overdrawn right now on my knife fund. Can we wait a little bit? He's like, yeah, no problem at all. I'm more than happy to wait. You just let me know when you're ready and I'll get started on it. You know, that's a really cool thing for a maker of his stature. And unfortunately, so many things have happened. I ended up making this big move halfway across the country that zapped a little bit of money temporarily, you know, and all these other things that are coming up. So I still haven't gotten my new build done yet. It is going to happen and I can't wait. We're doing a full Mokutai with zirconium. And I, I don't think we decided on the blade. I think we were just going to do a satin blade at the time. But um, now that I've got this in my hands, I kind of want another Sanmai or another type of Damascus blade. Because he really does them so well. But, you know, that does increase the cost. Do I really need it? No. Do I really want it? Oh, hell yeah. Kirby is one of those makers that I would be perfectly happy to only own his knives. Obviously, I would miss having the assortment that I'm used to, but he's one of those guys that every single knife that you see come out of his shop, you're like, wow, that's even better than the last. That's even more creative than the last. Oh, that's even more beautiful. So, you know, I'd be perfectly happy owning 20 Kirby Lamberts and nothing else. That's the, uh, the degree of respect that I have for him. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here for now, and I will see you on the next video. Thank you, as always, for watching. Follow me on Instagram if you can. It's at Jim Skelton TV. Very simple, very easy to find. Follow Kirby. Uh, it's at Lambert Knives on Instagram. Definitely follow him and see the cool shit that he's putting out. If you want to get on his books, you can, but it's a long wait. Last I heard was a little over two years. He could be closer to three years now, but it is absolutely worth the wait.